Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am sure glad to be back here with you. What a long week on an air mattress for four nights uh, in an isolated location with just my uncle. Uh, we kind of were getting sick of each other by the end there, and we'll do it again next week. Um, hopefully, we're done with this big house that we're drywalling, uh, finishing the drywall, hopefully before Christmas. Uh, with that out of the way, um, thank you for coming back and uh, sticking with me. I'm going to do my week in review and then some other notes later in the video. We're going to start with, uh, we're going to do men's basketball, women's basketball, hockey, football, and some other notes. Um, men's basketball, they're 5-2 and two now after they lost to number 3 Virginia uh, only by two points. I thought they would win that game in the preseason. Uh, you can go look that up if you would like. They led at halftime uh, 45 points they put up at halftime to 34 and only scored 23 in the second half. I've seen some highlights. I did not watch the full game yet. Um, 53% in that game from field goal percentage, 42% uh, from three. They were eight for 10 from the free throw line. So what, what, what's wrong? Something's missing here. Um, them stats, and they only had 12 turnovers. You know, it's a little bit high, but not extreme. Uh, only 10 assists. That could be better. Um, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. Maybe it's the lack of fortitude uh, that last year's team had. Um, I don't know. They're not playing team ball. W what is it? Uh, you tell me. Still could be better than last season, uh, like I predicted. Uh, they have Kentucky and London on Sunday, this coming Sunday. In women's basketball, they rolled on. They are 8-0 now. They beat number 21, Baylor, 84-75. to and they beat Miami 76 to 64. Emily Kaiser is filling in very nicely. Um, uh, 20 points per game, seven rebounds, 63% field goal percentage. Layla Filia averaging 17 points per game, 52% field goal percentage. And Leah Brown is averaging 15 points per game, five rebounds per game, four assists, and 51% field goal percentage. This team is just rolling along, coming off its first ever appearance in the Elite Eight last season in the tournament. Uh, Michigan Hockey uh, bounced back after their tie with Harvard Friday, last Friday, and beat Harvard 4-1. to one. So now they are 10-5-1. and one. Uh, with their losses all to teams ranked 18 or, or better. Uh, Boston, Penn State, Notre Dame, and Minnesota twice, who is now the number two team in the nation. Uh, they are at Wisconsin right now as we speak, playing a game. They have a two-game series with them this weekend. Young team, they, they'll find their way. They'll be in the NCAA tournament. Michigan football. Uh, tomorrow is the Big Ten Championship game, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. versus Purdue. Uh, it has been reported that Blake Corum is to have knee surgery and will be out for the remainder of the season. How will this affect his draft stock? Uh, I don't know. And will he return this coming uh, next season? It's seems to me that all these players that come back, Michigan's NIL uh, pays very nicely for the players that return and have established themselves. So we'll see if he'll make more money at Michigan than he will going pro. And if he does, then why not come back? Um, you know, Edwards is great, but it'd be nice to have that one-two punch again. And speaking of Edwards, it, he is probable to play tomorrow. Uh, after that 22 carry, 216 yard, two touchdown performance versus Ohio State, uh, his hand, maybe his cast, will be off for the game tomorrow. Schoonmaker is expected to play. Uh, he played a little bit versus Ohio State. Uh, I guess he just tweaked something is all I can uh, find. 
Mike Morris is questionable after he only played 11 snaps versus Ohio State. So we'll see. And I fully expect, um, I don't have time to do a preview, but I fully expect Michigan to win that game right around what the spread is, you know. It's going to be a comfortable win. Purdue had, you know, they have that passing game, but it's short passes. Lots of short passes. So we'll see what they can do versus the Michigan defense. And now for a few odds and ends. Uh, Cade McNamara, I guess, I knew he was transferring. I guess he picked Iowa. I didn't think he would ever go there. Uh, did they change their offensive coordinator, their scheme, the head coach? <laughs> Why go there? Mm, I, I'm not sure about that one, Cade. Uh, I wish the best of luck to you. Thank you for um, springboarding this team into the, the realm that they are in right now. I really appreciate that run for the Big Ten last season. In other news, uh, the 12-team playoff expansion is official for the 2024 season. You guys may know that I didn't, I don't really care for it. I didn't mind the expansion, uh, but I don't like buy, buys. I think, you know, teams can get rusty or, you know, the teams that are playing can get hot. I just don't understand the buys. Um, eight teams, I'm okay with. 12 is weird. 16, I would have been uh, okay with. Everyone plays the same amount of games. I understand, you know, the top four, they get home field advantage. Um, and they get that by and, you know, whatever, I guess it's earned, but you better have depth on your roster. If you are seated five through 12 going forward, because you are potentially going to play 16 games. If you make it to the national championship, uh, and the last three of those being playoff teams. So you better have some depth on your roster. They will be more like the NFL now where in that the best team might not always win anymore. It may be just who is the healthiest that will have the edge in the playoff going forward. Another reason that I'm not thrilled about this. I understand that more teams will get in. It'll be more inclusive um, down the stretch of the regular season. Uh, you'll have 16 to 18 teams or whatever um, vying for a playoff spot. And it will help with you know ratings and whatnot. I don't think it'll really hurt the regular season. Uh, just, I think it's going to devalue the the ultimate champion. Um, unless the number one team goes through that gauntlet and wins, then uh, that will be um, spectacular. And then finally, you have some coaching changes uh, when I was gone. Auburn, uh, Brian Harson was out. And they hired Hugh Freeze, I guess. Uh, he has uh, repented for his sins, the Bible thumper. Uh, I hid behind his Bible, and yet he was running brothels and stuff at Ole Miss. Uh, I don't know. Good luck, Auburn, with that one. Wisconsin, uh, Paul Christ was out, and uh, Luke Fickle is in from Cincinnati. Great hire there. Uh, what a steal for Wisconsin. They are going to be uh, scary. They've always had the defense. They've always had the running game. And he will be able to get a quarterback, in my opinion, that can open up Wisconsin's offense and become more modern, a la, well, Michigan, I guess, ain't the best example. But um, they can be a playoff caliber program. Nebraska. Scott Frost has been out, and so is Mickey Joseph, I guess. And Matt Rule is in, the former Baylor coach that resurrected that program uh, from their scandals. And he went to uh, the Carolina Panthers, didn't really work out. He was head coach there for a while. He is back in the college game, and Nebraska uh, swung and hit a home run with this hire. He's going to be exceptional out there in Nebraska. Arizona State, Herm Edwards was out, and Kenny Dillingham is in, the Oregon offensive coordinator. I think that's probably a good hire. You know, offense is the name of the game in the Pac-12, and he is a bright mind in that category. So 
there you have it, uh, the week in review. And we have USC and Utah in the Pac-12 championship tonight. I am excited about that one. I might do a post-game, uh, giving my thoughts on that. So there you guys have it. I'm back for the weekend. I got a couple of nights in my own bed. Uh, it's going to be so nice. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Remember to like the video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.